Welcome to Global Armenians on CivilNet. My guest today is Edmond Deragopian, who is joining us via Skype from London. Welcome to CivilNet, Edmond. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are a London-based freelance press photographer. Uh, you are actually an award-winning uh, photographer. Uh, you've won numerous awards, but among the most prestigious, I would say, is the World Press Photo, uh, the spot news for World Press Photo. Um, for the work you did, um, the photos you took during the London bombings in 2005. Um, you've had a very illustrious career uh, as a photographer, as a press photographer. Was that something that um, you always wanted to do? Did you know that you wanted to be a photographer? Uh, I knew I loved photography from a very young age. I used to always take the little family camera and, and take snapshots. Um, and it became a hobby when uh, when I reached 16, I managed to get myself a proper camera and uh, and used to just love taking photographs. But my career choice initially was uh, to be a surgeon. I was uh, studying chemistry and biology and I was going to apply to university to do medicine and then surgery as a speciality and I just fell in love with photography full on and uh, one day I read in a magazine that uh, the photographer got commissioned to do a shoot for one of the fashion houses and uh, until that point I didn't realize photographers got paid money I didn't realize it was a career as silly as it sounds uh, and that was it the seed was planted and um, and I knew I wanted to be a photojournalist I knew I wanted to get into press photography footsteps of some of the greatest photographers I admired. That's, that's how it all started. That's, it's interesting. Um, you, you've, you've participated in group and solo exhibitions. Your photographs have been published. And uh, your clients include some of the biggest names in the industry, The Guardian, The Times, The Daily Mirror. Um, and obviously, hopefully, you've been making money doing what you're doing. I mean, Oftentimes we say that it's, it's, it's such a great gift to be able to do what you love and to be able to make a living at the same time. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I never take it for granted. Um, I know I'm very fortunate to be able to do what I love as, as my job. Um, and it's, 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 a great, it's a great feeling. You know, some assignments are boring, some assignments are tough, some assignments are difficult or they're wet or they're cold you know it's not uh, every day isn't a glamorous kind of uh, uh, existence yeah. um, but still I wouldn't swap it for, for anything else and um, you know in editorial photography and news photography one makes a compromise you know it's it's not the, the best living in the world as uh, you know financially as, as you mentioned earlier but uh, it's, it's certainly good for the soul and it's important work I see it as a, as a duty and a responsibility to uh, to be a good photojournalist, to be able to tell people's stories. So, you know, it, um, it, it weighs, weighs itself up in other ways. Yeah, because you can tell some very moving stories just by one image. I was looking through your portfolio and you had uh, photos of Princess Diana and, and uh, Prince Charles. You had images of Tony Blair playing the guitar. Um, I'm assuming those were fun photo shoots for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, they're... Um, it's, it's what you make of every situation, I think. Um, some are fun, some are, some are more serious, but yes, yeah, certainly, you know, photographing the Prime Minister, grabbing an electric guitar, sort of very um, un, unchoreographed and, and, and playing it, you know, it sort of made a great picture. I managed to get into position and shoot it before security moved me on, so that sort of made a nice, uh, it's, it's nice shot. Yeah, it's interesting for me because I was also looking at the photos that you had taken of the London bombings and there was an image of a man, I think he had a newspaper folded under his arm and he was bandaged up and bloody. There was such a, a strange look in his eyes. I can't tell if it was just another day in London or if this guy was in shock, um, but it evoked so many uh, feelings and, and, and that must be an amazing feeling for you as a photographer to be able to tell that story of that horrific event through a single snapshot. Uh, it's it, well, it's as I said earlier, it's our duty, it's our responsibility to to do that. And you know, sometimes we don't succeed, but other times we do. And uh, to create a photograph like that is, you know, personally is important because it means I'm I'm achieving my my goal. And uh, that picture, in fact, was the one that won third place in the Spot News category at Watch Press. Uh, there you go. Interesting. 
pitched. Um, but the look in his eyes is is one of shock. You know, he was clearly in the in the carriage that uh, that, that blew up. Um, but there's also sort of other elements in that. You know, this sort of British stiff upper lip. You know, trying to carry on with the day as normally as possible, still having his newspaper. His arm, although it's covered in blood at this stage, um, so it, it does. I think it speaks a lot, and that's the feedback I've had from from people who've seen it in the newspapers and in books, and also in exhibitions. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of you to, to sort of agree with that as well. Yeah, you um, you've also been to Armenia. Um, among the photos that I saw in your portfolio were shots of um, the tenth anniversary of the earthquake that happened. Uh, in the northern part of Armenia, in Spidak and Gyumri in 1988, uh, and images from the Gharapag War. Do you come to Armenia often? Uh, not often enough. Uh, I think I've only been there three times, and, uh, and every time it's, it's been for various assignments. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting to sort of, you know, go back home, because I, I wasn't born in Armenia. I was born in Iran, but obviously I'm very much an Armenian. That's what I. That's what I feel. That's what my heritage is. Um, but and it's it's just been very interesting to explore explore that uh, you know through the work I did on the commemoration of the earthquake through uh, visiting Garabab uh, and and sort of hanging out on the front lines with the soldiers and and getting to sort of know them a little bit through just walking around in Yerevan doing some street photography and and, and chatting to people. Uh, so it's something I, I very much enjoy, enjoy shooting, enjoy doing. Well, um, we would very much love to have you back um, because I suspect uh, as a diaspora an Armenian who has, you know, been born and raised in, in, in lands other than Armenia to come back, there are so many stories to tell in Armenia. And, um, I think that our global reach, our global network of Armenians from around the world by coming and contributing and just by telling stories we help uh, we help raise each other in that sense. I agree. I agree. We we enrich each other. I think uh, just by that sort of sharing and understanding and exploration. And, um, uh, you know, it's it's a very interesting, and some would say sort of one's duty as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, you you have now forayed into filmmaking. Um, was that something? Did that just Again, was that a, a spontaneous thing, or was that someone something that you had in uh, sort of in your vision of what you wanted to do? No, it definitely wasn't in my vision. And uh, in fact, I spent pr a good sort of two years fighting against shooting film, fighting against shooting video, having arguments with picture editors who wanted to commission me to do video, uh, to colleagues who were early adopters. You know, literally having shouting matches uh, <laughs> where. It's, my, my stance was, you know, I'm very much a photographer. It's about the single image. That's where my skills are, uh, and video has no soul. Um, what changed my mind was, was technological, uh, in fact, because Canon brought out a, a, a stills camera. It was called a Canon 5D Mark II, uh, which was an excellent photographic tool. But it also shot video. And the first time I, I saw a proper film shot on it, which was by a friend and colleague from New York called Vincent the Foray. Um, the first time I saw his film Reverie, it, it completely blew my mind because I realized that for the first time I would have access to a camera that can shoot video but do it with soul as opposed to just be a sort of generic uh, sort of video camera look that has no feeling to it because photography is very much a communication and it's a communication that has feeling, emotion. Uh, a video camera just didn't never allowed me, wouldn't have allowed me to do that, whereas this camera did. And I kind of just opened my eyes a little bit and I started to explore it a little bit. And before I knew it, I changed my mind 180 degrees. I'd done a complete U-turn and uh, began to embrace sort of, you know, um, learning the visual language of moving images and uh, learning about audio and, and sort of constructing films. And uh, it kind of from there, and it's um, it's a tool which I very much enjoy having at my disposal now. Because some stories are better told with pictures, some stories are better told with with short films. Right, right. And uh, well, obviously, uh, you know, you're really, really good at what you do because one of your short films ha has been nominated for the Taste Awards. Um, it's in the Viewer's Choice category for a short film you did on the Electric Coffee Company. Is that correct? 
Indeed, yes, yes. yes. And so we can tell our viewers that voting is open till uh, December 18th, and if they want, they can go and they can vote for your short film, and uh, hopefully, it will it will win in the in the category. That would be fantastic. Yeah, if uh, the viewers like the film, you can uh, find it on my blog. There's a, there's a little article on on it, and you can have a look at the film if you like it. There's a link there, and pop over to the Taste Awards uh, website and. Uh, and cast your vote, it would be very much appreciated. Sure, we unashamedly, uh, you know, <laughs> support our global Armenians from around the world. Uh, Edmond John, I'd really like to thank you for taking the time, uh, albeit with some technical difficulties, to sit down with us and talk about your world of photos and images, uh, and now your new world of filmmaking. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. This has been Global Armenians for CivilNet. Thank you.